Good evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Curtis Smith with Three Tier Defense LLC, located here in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we're going to talk about cleaning fire alarms. I have a couple fire alarms here with me. Today, I have my Shield nine, uh, nine millimeter, and I also have my Springfield Hellcat nine millimeter. Uh, I just recently took these two firearms to the range and shot them, so I'm going to do a breakdown and go ahead and clean the uh, these firearms. To go over a couple things that I want to have when um, when you look at cleaning firearms, always want to have some gloves. These are just regular latex gloves. Always want to have some gloves because you'll be messing around with oils and, and things like that, and your pores. Um, you want to make sure that your pores are covered so none of this oil or anything will actually seep into your uh, into your skin. I do have some uh, ram oil. I'll be using this to actually clean the fire off today. And I have some compressed air as well. Uh, here are some of the uh, some of the things I'll be using to clean. I have a couple uh, brushes here. Uh, one end of the brush has like a, a thicker end. It's almost like a toothbrush. The other end is pretty small, basically just to get into some of the nicks and crannies on the, uh, the firearms. On this brush here, see the same thing, uh, thicker end and a thinner end, and then here on this brush as well. So we got three different brushes. One of them is a harder brush, one is a medium size, uh, a medium bristle brush, and we have a, a soft bristle brush as well. I have my kit that I'll be using for the uh, cleaning. Have some scrub brushes, scrub brushes like this here. Have some smooth brushes as well. Have a couple uh, different size uh, utensils here that we'll basically be using for the barrel cleaning. And we also have some pads, basically just regular cleaning pads. I actually got these from Cabela's and they're basically just cleaning patches for when you're cleaning your fire alarm. Those basically are the, um, the things we'll actually use to be cleaning these fire alarms today. I'm going to do a, a field, well, what's known as a field breakdown, which is basically just breaking the fire alarm down to four parts or four components, which would be your grip, your barrel, your recoil spring, and your slide. So I will actually go ahead and take both of these down to the uh, field clean position. Uh, both of these do have a magazine in them. There are actually no rounds in the magazine. There's no rounds in the chamber. So as always, I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, latex gloves on first. Make sure we're set up with that. And I'm going to, as you all see, the, um, the firearms are locked open. I'm going to go ahead and remove the magazine out of both firearms. As you can see, the magazine is empty in the Smith & Wesson. And the magazine is empty in the Springfield Hellcat as well. Just going to set those off to the side. The first firearm I'm going to break down will be the Smith & Wesson Shield. To break this down, this is actually easy, very easy to break down. Here, you have a breakdown lever and you have your um, slide release here. Basically, on the breakdown lever, you're going to push down on the breakdown lever to push that into the uh, vertical position. You're going to go ahead and let the slide close forward. Then you're going to pull the trigger to actually drop the firing pin to release the slide from the frame. So we're going to pull the trigger and the slide does come off of the frame. So you have your, your frame and your grip here. We're going to go ahead and take our dual recoil spring out. We're going to take our barrel out. And we also have our slide. So these are the four compo uh, components that we'll be breaking the fire on down to to go ahead and do a uh, field clean on the fire on. Next, I'll go ahead and break down the Hellcat. The Hellcat is very similar to the Smith & Wesson Shield. You have your breakdown lever here in the front. 
and you have your slide release here in the back. On the spray field, instead of pushing your release lever down, on the spray field, you're actually going to push your release lever up. So as you see, I did push the release lever up. And we're basically going to do the same thing. Go ahead and let the slide close forward. We pull the trigger to drop the fire pin to release the slide from the frame. And again, we have our frame. We have our dual recoil spring. We have our barrel and we have our slide. So we have both fire arms broken down to the uh, field cleaning position, which again, basically just your grip. Your barrel, your dual recoil spring, and your slide with both firearms. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do, well, before I do that, I'm going to actually uh, blow compressed air into the grip, the slide, and then I'll blow a little bit down the uh, down to the barrel as well, and blow a little bit on the uh, dual recoil spring. And basically, the only thing that I'm doing is, like I say, I've, I've taken this to the range. I'm just blowing any uh, dust or anything like that that have possibly settled, uh, gunpowder or anything like that that have possibly settled into the uh, all of your components. I'm just going to blow that out with a little bit of compressed air and both fire arms. I'm going to go ahead and take my, uh, my straw here. Go ahead and put it into my nozzle on my compressed air. All right, and basically just do a, a light um, a light blow. You really don't have to sit there and, and hold it to blow it. Basically just do a little, little light blow. Just making sure you're getting any dust or anything that have settled in the, uh, like I said, in the crooks and crannies of the firearms before we spray it with, um, with the oil. Basically, the reason that I want to do that is because I want to make sure that I have all the dust and uh, well, loose dust, loose gunpowder, and everything like that that is in the firearms before I spray it with my oil because it'll actually cake it up. So I'll go ahead and take my grip. And we'll do the same thing with the Hellcat. got that done we can go ahead and take our oil I'm not going to spray a whole lot of oil into the uh, the firearms these firearms is not uh, extremely dirty or anything like that but again I do want to clean them I want to make sure that they're uh, functioning properly and uh, doesn't don't have any caked up uh, gunpowder or they're not just sitting around with gunpowder and everything again I'm caking up some of the mechanisms so I'm going to basically do a light spray over my uh, my Slide my grip, my barrel on the inside of the barrel and on the outside of the barrel. I do a little light spray on the dual recoil spring, and then I also spray on the uh, the grip as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little light spray on these. And usually, what I like to do, like I say, I haven't uh, uh, really let these sit long or anything like that. I usually clean my firearms every time I come from the range. So they're not extremely dirty at all. But when I do spray all in them, I do let them sit for a little bit and let that all basically get into those uh, all those little nooks and crannies. got all of that sprayed down like I said I'd usually let them sit a little bit usually don't let them sit real long with the uh, with the oil and everything get them I'll say roughly maybe a minute or two something like that and you now go ahead and start uh, start cleaning them out first one I'm going to go ahead and, and clean would be the Smith & Wesson we're going to work with that one first all right so
So first thing that I like to do, basically just get my uh, one of my brushes here. Like I said, it's not um, a lot of uh, gunpowder or anything caked up in it, so I really don't need to use the hard uh, brush. So I usually just go ahead and use the, the soft bristle brush just to loosen up any uh, any gunpowder or any dust or anything that may have settled inside of the firearm prior to cleaning it. Um, I just go ahead and use the soft bristle brush. I don't want to scratch up anything or uh, any other metal or anything like that. I like to keep my guns looking as, br and as brand new as possible, even if I do fire them. So I basically just go into the uh, into the nooks and crannies, uh, into the slides and things like that here on the uh, on the on the slide. So I basically start back here on the back side. On the back side, you see back here on this side. You basically got a, a piece of metal here and then you have uh, little areas right on the side of that so I basically for the most part to get that area I'll take the small side of the brush and get down into that area on both sides now I'll take the bigger area and actually brush along the piece of metal that's there in the front Here in this open area right here, I usually just take the big side and brush into that area. I'm not putting a lot of pressure or anything like that as I'm uh, as I'm going back and forth with the brush. Like I said, I'm not trying to scratch it up or anything. I just want to make sure that I'm loosening up any gunpowder or any dust or anything that have settled in those uh, in those parts. Okay, now on the sides of the slide, there's basically a little indentation on both sides of the slide. That's basically your guide rail for your grip, this little part of your grip here, to slide into the actual, the actual slide, like this. So in those areas, I basically just tilt it down to the side, take my little small side of my, uh, of my brush, and basically just do a, a light wipe in that area as well on both sides to make sure that you get the, again, the gunpowder and the dust or anything that may have settled. I'm gonna go ahead and do the slide on the, uh, on the Hellcat as well. And basically what I'll do, each part that I do on one firearm, I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other one. That way we'll go ahead and uh, get both of them cleaned at the same time. So on the Hellcat, again, you still have the same part, your big piece of metal here. And then you also have your little indentations right there on each side. And then here on the each side, you actually have your little slides for your, uh, your guide rail here on your grip. So we're basically just going to go ahead and do the same thing with that. Just go ahead and get that wiped out or brushed out. Like I said, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the uh, on the brush or anything. I don't want to scrape or scratch up the metal. I basically just want to get the the dust, gunpowder, or anything that is settled in those areas. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the front area here again with the big part of the brush. Again, the uh, rails here on the side for the guy rail on the grip. We'll go ahead and get those wiped up. All right, we got those done. 
go ahead and put my uh, my brush off to the side. The next thing I'm going to grab will basically be a, a, boar, bris a boar bristle brush for my barrels. Uh, again, both of these are both 9 millimeters, so the same size bore brush should fit both barrels. So I'll just go ahead and check. And we will actually go ahead and get all of this put together. So we can go ahead and clean the barrels. And basically the only thing that I'm doing, I have these little adapters that came in the kit for the, uh, the bottom part of the bore, the bore brushes. Some of them are actually too big to fit into the, uh, the pole that is in the kit with it. So they basically just give you these adapters that you can use. And I try to be very careful with the uh, with the barrels. Again, I don't want to scrape up the inside of the barrel. On the inside of the barrel, you have your lands and grooves or your riflings, uh, which is basically if you look down your barrel, you see like little uh, little spiral grooves that are in your barrel. You don't really want to scratch those up. So what I usually do, I'll take my bore brush because your brush is kind of kind of coarse. So I don't put my brush into the barrel and start scrubbing it. Basically what I do is I take my brush, I take my barrel, and I put my brush into the barrel, and I basically do a straight pass, straight through, to the other side. Oops. Actually... So we are going to go with, uh, let's see, let's see if I'll go with another size. Basically, this size right here is actually too big to, well, actually it's not. I didn't think that it was, but it didn't want to feed in. So we're going to try this again. That works. Oh, don't want to go through that way. Don't want to go through that way either. Hmm. this through here.
go with the smaller, smaller bore brush. All right. So basically, what I like to do is basically just start on one side and just push straight through all the way out to the other side. And I usually do that three times on each side. So there's two, three, and then I'll flip the barrel over and actually go in the opposite way three times as well. Because like I say, I don't want to just have the, the, the board brush in there just scratching up the, uh, the inner part of the barrel. And again, I'll go ahead and do the uh, the barrel on the Hellcat as well. Basically pushing through three times on each side. We'll flip it over. And again, I'll go ahead and let this sit a little bit after running through with the uh, with the bore brush. We can set this off to the side. Now we'll go ahead and work on our grips. Usually with the with the grips, I'll use the uh, the same brush here on the grips. All right, so we're going to start with the grip of the uh, Smith & Wesson Shield first. On the inside of the grip, you see that you have, there's a little part right here, which is actually for your trigger housing. I don't know if you can see that part moving, but that's for your trigger housing. You want to be careful with that part because you don't want to scrape and get any of your uh, brushes or bristles or anything caught on that part and actually bend it. All right, so you want to basically just do a, a light uh, brushing around those areas, around any of your other mechanisms, um, anything that's, uh, that can move. You have your slide release lever here on the side. I don't know if you can see that on the inside of that actually coming up. That little back part right there, that's actually what stops your slide when you lock your slide open. It actually goes into this part right here on your slide. All right, so we're basically just going to do a light brushing on the grip of the uh, Smith & Wesson Shield 9mm. Trying to get into the housing and uh, everything as good as possible. Remember, you did hit it with the compressed air first, so you should have knocked a lot of the dust or uh, any gunpowder or anything like that off of the, uh, out of the mechanisms and out of the housings and things like that. So again, you, you don't have to uh, stand here and, and you know dig your brush into the grips or into the, uh, any other parts of the fire on. You're basically just doing a little light, light cleaning. Alright, go ahead and grab the Hellcat. And basically just doing the same thing. And on the Hellcat, you do have a trigger housing as well. Right now, the trigger is actually pushed in. But this little housing here on the top. If you push forward on that, you can see the trigger actually coming out. So you can push that all the way forward, but we're not going to do that right now. But just be careful with this uh, with this piece here because that is part of your uh, of your trigger housing. All right. Now that we have all that, we're going to take one of our pads here, and we're basically just going to wipe along the grip, along the slide and get some of that oil off of there. I don't wipe it until it's bone dry. Um, it does still have a, a, a gloss on the inside of it from the, uh, from the oil, but 
when I get done with everything, put everything back together, I do spray some rim oil onto my uh, actual pad and I actually do wipe it, uh, wipe the fire on down as well. So I'm basically just getting all the dirt and gunpowder, dust, anything like that, again, to have set up in the, uh, into the fire on. So as you can see, your fire arms do get pretty dirty. Even if they're just sitting up, uh, and they've just been sitting up for, for a while, depending on actually where you store your fire arms, they, uh, they will collect dust. So even if you just break it down, even, like I said, if you haven't shot in it or anything, even if you break it down once a month, uh, once every other month, something like that, basically just to oil it down, you will see a little bit of dirt just from having to sit up. So any of my firearms that I haven't shot in a while, that are just sitting up, I usually try to break those down at least once a month, just to all them, uh, wipe them off, get any other dirt or anything out. Even though I do have uh, my firearms in my safe, but again, I'll break them down. It's just really a habit of doing it. All right, so we got the grip on the uh, Smith & Wesson shield done. So we're actually doing the grip on the Hellcat now. To get down into the little crannies here, I'm actually going to do it on the, uh, the Smith & Wesson as well. But to get down into these little crevices here, I basically just fold my pad and just put that down into those crevices and wipe that out. Again, this is really just a field clean on that, breaking the firearm all the way down to its, uh, to its barest points or anything like that. I'm just doing basically a field clean on it just to make sure I'm getting the dirt and do, uh, not debris, but dust and gunpowder uh, and things that may have settled into those components from either the range or, again, just sitting up collecting dust. Now I do have a little bit of a different technique when it comes to actually doing the uh, <clears throat> the side parts that would attach back to the uh, to the rail on the grip. All right, go ahead and put that one to the side. And basically, for the areas here on each side, I'll take another pad. And I'll usually take one of my little small, little small rods. Um, actually, I'll take this here. It's basically just a, a little uh, smooth brush here, but I want the back of it. This little thin part right here. Now I basically just take this little part, put it into the pad. Like that. And just go along on the inside of the rail. And again, I'm not just uh, sitting up scrubbing the rail or anything like that. I'm basically just making smooth passes all the way through the rail. As you see, you do still have a little bit of dirt in that area too. I'm not exactly sure if you can see it, but there is a little bit of dirt that get caught up into the, uh, they get caught up into that part as well. So I just want to make sure that's also clean since I have the fire on broken down, and I am going through uh, getting the dust and gunpowder off of all of the uh, 
of the area that um, assess uh, that I have accessibility to right now. So we did that on the shield. I'm going to do the same thing on the uh, on the hell head. Just making one or two uh, smooth passes on that area. We'll go ahead and flip it over and do the other area. And do another light spray on the inside of the uh, of both barrels. That's why I usually have a couple pair of gloves down here with me. So now basically what we're going to do is I'm going to take one of the uh, my smooth brushes and run it through the uh, through the barrel. Same as I did with the board brush. I'm basically just going through on each side two maybe three times. Because your board brush here basically loosened up any dirt that was in your right lens or your lands and grooves. It loosened that up. The smooth brush uh, you're basically just going through uh, collecting any of the uh, dust or gunpowder or anything that was still in those areas that the board brush actually loosened up. There is another way we can do this also. Actually, I'll go ahead and do it that way. So basically, I'll just take a rod. I'll take one of my patches. And I'll basically just take the end of the rod and fold the patch over it. Or you can basically just lay the patch over the opening. So take your rod and just go straight through. So again, we usually do three passes on each end. Before I do the other side, I just want to show you that even though we went through with the board brush, you do still have dirt that is in there, which is actually why we want to go back through it again with a patch or one of your smooth brushes. So we're going to go through the other side. So as you see, this patch is actually clean. So that's why we want to go through and, and just to make sure we get all the dust, dirt, gunpowder out of your out of your barrel. So again, going through on the Hellcat. You can see how, dirt, how dirty that is, even though we went through with the board brush. We'll go ahead and get a clean pack, and we'll go through the opposite side.
again, the pad comes up clean. All right. So now I am going to actually get a clean pad. I'm going to spray this pad with a little bit of the rim oil. And I'm going to lightly wipe the side of the slide. I'm going to wipe along the outside of both barrels. And I'm going to wipe the inside of the, uh, of the grip as well. Then I'm also going to take this and, and do a light wipe around the uh, dual recoil spring. Clean your firearm and making sure that your firearm is clean. It's basically just it's basic maintenance of your firearm. Um, firearm ownership. And just making sure that, again, that your, uh, your firearm is clean. Make sure that it's uh, operational. That way, in case of a defensive situation, you don't have to worry about it jamming or anything like that on you. And you got that wiped down. Again, go ahead and do a light wipe on your dual recoil spring. And the grip. As you may notice, I actually haven't wiped inside of the magazine well. I haven't wiped, uh, wiped the trigger or anything yet. I do wipe those out, but I actually wipe those out last. Some people ask me, why do I wipe the, uh, the magazine well out? Why do I wipe the trigger off uh, and stuff like that? When you have your magazine in, Smith & Wesson, go ahead and take the Smith & Wesson magazine. Again, it's empty. When you have your magazine in, you can actually see along the side of your magazine, in your magazine well, there's a little bit of space there. That's open area for gunpowder and dust and dirt and stuff like that to actually get into your magazine well. So that's why I actually wipe my magazine well out. Uh, I mean, when I have the fire on broken down, it's basically just a quick wipe, so there's really no, no big adjustments or anything like that in actually wiping that out. Uh, I wipe down the magazines also. And again, on the, uh, the trigger, the trigger housing, all of that stuff, I actually do a, a light wipe of the entire fire on once I get done cleaning the inside and everything. So I do wipe, that, uh, wipe the trigger part and the trigger uh, housing area at that time also all right so we're going to let that one sit we're going to go ahead and get the tail care wiped down again cleaning out your firearms is just maintenance uh, good rule of thumb any firearm that you get you want to make sure you know how to break it down you want to make sure you know how to clean it uh, these are relatively easy to break down but you do have some firearms that are a little bit more difficult to break down, like your 1911s. Some people do have issues with breaking down 1911s. But just making sure that you know how to break all of your firearms down that you'll be carrying, or even the ones that you basically just have at home. Just making sure you know how to break down the firearms, clean them, uh, put them back together, just in case you need them. At any time, they'll be ready for use. All right. Got the slide done on the Hellcat. Go ahead and 
ahead and do a little wipe on the barrel. Do a recoil spring. As they say, practice makes perfect. So the more you break your firearm down, clean it, of course, the better you'll become at doing it. Really won't take you as long. Uh, sometimes I'll put a little bit more concentration on some of my firearms. Other times, like I said, especially if I haven't shot the firearm, if I'm just getting it out the safe once a month just to clean it out. Uh, it, does, it doesn't really take long to do it. I can probably break down a firearm and clean it, all of it, put it back together, roughly about maybe 10 minutes. All right, so we got that done. Go ahead and put that back. I'm gonna take a little bit of a, little bit more compressed air and go back through these, the slide the grip on both firearms. Go ahead and put the firearms back together. Take your slide, take your barrel, put your barrel down to your to your slide, sit it back where it actually fits into the housing. Take your dual recoil spring. Here on the back side of the barrel, you actually have a dual recoil spring housing, and the front part of your recoil spring will go right up underneath the barrel here. You're going to compress it down a little bit, make sure that it sits into the uh, dual recoil spray housing on the back of the barrel. You're going to take your grip, you're going to line, line your guide rails here up to the back part of your slide. You're going to go ahead and slide that back. Once you get it back, you're going to go ahead and lock your, you're going to push your slide all the way to the rear and you're going to uh, lock it to the rear position. And you're basically just pushing back on your slide, pushing up on your slide release over here on the side. Once you get it locked, locked to the rear, your release lever, you're going to push that back up. And go ahead and lock that back. Lock that back onto the slide. I'm sorry, lock the slide back onto the grip. On the Hellcat, do the same thing. Take your barrel, put your barrel into the housing. Make sure it sits back. Take your dual recoil spring. Put your dual recoil spring into the dual recoil spring housing. Making sure that you compress it a little bit. Make sure it sits back into the housing on the back side of the barrel. You want to make sure that it's straight. As you can see here, it's actually canted off a little bit. So you want to make sure that that's in the middle of the uh, of the, the dual recoil spring housing on the back of the barrel. Then we'll take our grip. Again, basically lining up your 
your guide, ra uh, guide rails here to the back side of your fire arm. You're going to go ahead and slide that to the rear. Again, push the slide all the way to the rear. Push up on your slide release to lock it in the rear. With it locked here, basically push down on your uh, release lever to go ahead and lock that back onto the grip. We'll go ahead and check it. Lock it open. So again, I'll take a, uh, a pad. Stuck together. So again, with uh, with these pads, once I put the fire on back together, I lightly spray the pads. That way, I can wipe the outside of the fire on, uh, wipe up in the magazine well, wipe the trigger housing. Take our, our shield. And at this time, I actually wipe out the trigger guard along the outside and the inside of the trigger guard. And the inside of the magazine well. Our Smith & Wesson shield is clean. Let's spray a little bit more of the oil into the pad at the magazine. Go ahead and do a little light wipe on the magazine also. check it make sure it has a smooth feed in and smooth release of the magazine into the magazine well on the fire arm. Alright. Insert. Release. Insert. Release. Looks pretty good for you. Take our other pair, we'll do the same thing with the Hellcat. Now, I don't 
gonna drench the pad when I'm doing the uh, the light wipe on the outside. Like I said, I just lightly spray it just to dampen it. That way I can get a nice wipe on the uh, the entire fire on on the outside of it. Magazine well. All right, the old cat is clean. For a little bit more of our rim oil so we can wipe the magazine. And we do a final check. Looks good to me. Okay, looks good. Shield look good. There we have it. I appreciate you all for tuning in. See you all at the next video.